Hello everyone, today we are going to take a look at the on behalf flow and how you can implement it using Azure API management. First of all, what is the on behalf of flow? Well, as you can see in this diagram, this flow allows a logged in user to access resources, for example, this API by passing its token to it using some middleman. In our case, that middleman would be the API management. So the user would hit the API management and the API management would request on behalf of this user a new token and that token would be user's token. Then it will call the API or the durable function. Let's take a look at the whole flow. So user is signed in, as you can see. Then he gets, he requests an access token for the APIM. Then the user calls the API. For example, he wants to call this API. He uses the endpoint of the API management, passing this token, this scope. Then the API management uses the uh, the user's token to access to request another token for the API. So it requests the API one read write scope, which is for this API. Then it calls the API, and the API then has a user's access token in it. So it it's now acting on user's behalf. So it can ask another token, for example, for key vault, like so. It, un it makes a request again against enter ID, passing the user's token and asks for another token for key vault. And then it calls the key vault. And then this is the, the interesting bit. If the user doesn't have access to this key vault, then this will fail because the API is using the user's token. It's not acting on, it's acting on behalf of the user. It's not acting on, on its own. So if the user doesn't have access to, to the resource, in this case, key vault, then this will fail. And that's the whole idea behind on behalf of flow. So let's take a look at how I've implemented this in Azure. I have a resource group here and I've created a few resources. I have an API management, I have an API and I have a durable function. I also have storage account and key vault as uh, end destination services to test uh, the on behalf of flow. Now let's take a look at another thing, which is enter ID. In here, I have two app registrations, one for the client app and one for the APIM. Let's first take a look at the client app. It's nothing fancy. We have the client app, the redirect URIs, and here is where the interesting bit is. We have a API permission against the APIM with this scope, APIM access read write. And that's that's all there is to it. Then let's go to the API management. Here we have a few more pieces. We have a client secret to use to authenticate against it. We have a few permissions. So to access key vault, to access storage, and we expose the scopes here for the durable function, for the API, and for the APM. And that's it. Now, let's take a look at the APM. Here, when the user tries to access the APM and to access an API behind it, so we have our APIs here. So we have API1 and the durable function. This is a default one. Okay. So let's take a look, for example, with of the API. We have our endpoints. 
And here inbound processing is where the, the magic happens. We have a policy, let's take a look, that uh, makes a request using the currently signed in users token to get a scope of API 1 read write. And if you remember, this here, this bit here, we request the scope and then the API management calls the API with this scope. This is really the magic. So you see here on behalf of token. This is how we get the on behalf of token using API management. Okay, let's now see this in action. Here is my code base. Here is my client app. I have a controller for the API and I also have a controller for the function app, the durable function, which is here. I have app settings which goes to my client app registration. So, so this is the client app registration that I showed you. I also have a downstream API configuration which is my API management. As you can see here, I only have this scope, so I only need this scope to be able to access the API management as a user of this app. Okay, let's see program CS. We have an authentication, we have a downstream API, uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, let's take a look at the API. So again, I have a app settings here, uh, but these app settings go to the API management now. I have a key vault endpoint and the authentication. I also added the scope of API 1 read write because this API requires this scope to function. You need to have this scope in your token to be able to, to access this API through API M. And yeah, this is uh, the scope and I have an endpoint for key vault and one for showing the tokens expiration time. I also added a few uh, helper classes to acquire the token on behalf of the user. And here I'm asking for a key vault token. So to be able to access key vault and that's it. The durable function is a tricky one because it doesn't have uh, built-in uh, uh, integration with authentication and scopes. I have a class which is using the JWT token and I'm making a connection to the uh, app registration to get the token and to validate it. In the function itself, In the starter fun function, I'm checking the authorization header. I'm validating the token. If it's not valid, then I throw. If it's valid, I pass the token to the orchestrator and I get the token because otherwise you will not be able to access it. And then I run get all blobs and this makes a request to the storage account so the user needs to have access to the storage account it passes the token uh, and it access the blob let's now see this in action i'll start the client app so i'm logged in as you can see with my user here and if I go to API 1, I have two options. I can call the key vault and I can call the token expiration. So this behind the scenes is using API management. Let's open again our diagram. 
we're right here right now and if I make a request to get the key vault uh, secret we'll go through here and the API management would call the API using the uh, API 1 read write scope and the API will call key vault with user's token so if the user if I don't have access to this key vault it will fail because it's using user's token okay let's try this let's call key vault and as you can see it works great let's now call the token expiration endpoint it also works now I'll do something I'll revoke my access to the key vault to do that I go to the key vault go to row assignments and I'll revoke my access as key vault administrator let's do that okay so now I as a user don't have access to this key vault let's try again hitting this endpoint and see what it happens okay so now it doesn't work which is the expected behavior in the on behalf of flow let me let me add myself again as a key vault administrator And let's try again to see if this will work okay go back go key vault and voila it's working and it's pretty much the same with the durable function so in the durable function i only have this endpoint here start orchestrator let's click on start orchestrator and now Let's see the status of this function. Okay, here is the output. So we only have one blob. And let's go to Azure again. And here's our storage account. Let's go to the access control and let's see the row assignments. And again, this is my user, it has storage blob data contributor role. Let's remove this. Let's go back again. Let's click on durable function. Let's start the orchestrator. And we can start it because we have the durable function scope but the business logic in that durable function relies on the storage account let's try and see the outcome now and the outcome is 403 which is expected because we revoke our user access to that storage account and that's pretty much it